So how to set up conversion actions. So first things first, we're going to go to measurement conversions. We're going to click on this plus sign. First thing that we're going to set up is how to track form submission conversions on your website. So uh, first thing you want to select is the lead selection here. Select the action that you'd like to track, lead, okay, conversion name, form submission. Then we want to go, um, for the time being, just because every, everything varies, we're going to not use a value for this conversion action. No value. Count, uh, select how many conversions to count per click or interaction. We're going to do every. Uh, what this means is if one person converts two times, that'll be tracked as two conversions. Our conversion window, we're going to expand this to 90 days just because I want always to be tracking when people convert, um, no matter what that timeline is. You never know when someone's going to write your website down and convert later once they uh, visit it from a Google ad. Okay, so view through conversion window. Okay, we're going to keep that as is. Including conversions, yes. Attribution model. Um, so this is the easiest way is to do last click. So to, to basically track the keyword that was typed in on that last click. I personally think that the most, uh, the one that gives you the best data is time decay. So let's do time decay because what it does is it attributes, if someone first typed in, you know, as an example, bankruptcy lawyer, uh, and then was introduced to your firm, to your law firm, then what happens next is, let's say two days later, they, so they clicked on your ad, they typed in bankruptcy lawyer, then you, you know, from the page that they were sent to on your website, they were educated on chapter seven bankruptcy, and then their next search is chapter seven bankruptcy um, filing, right? And your ad shows up again, and they click it again, and then that time they become a lead and they call you. Well, what's gonna happen is, Google's going to give a little bit more weight to that second search, okay? So, but it's not last click. Under last click, you would only get credit for the last keyword they typed in before they called you. You wouldn't get any credit for that first keyword they typed in when they became familiarized with your brand. So, um, I like Time Decay because it gives a little bit of emphasis to that first search that they made, but a little bit more to the search that they made right before they called you. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Time decay is usually the best to set up. And then right now we have manual CPC set up. Um, so let's go create and continue. All right, we're going to install the tag ourselves. Okay. Okay, so this is the global site tag which needs to be on every page of your site. So an easy way to do that is you can just put it on the header tracking code section. Since we use ClickFunnels landing pages, we're going to show you how to do this in ClickFunnels, but it's very similar for WordPress and any of the major content management systems. Okay, so the global site tag adds visitors to your basic remarketing list and sets new cookies on your domain. Okay, you must install this tag on every page of your website. Global site tag isn't installed on all of your HTML, HTML pages. If that's the case, copy this, okay? Didn't need to download that. Copy, okay. Now I'm gonna show you our ClickFunnels account for this. And I'm gonna paste it into our head tracking code section in ClickFunnels. Okay, and I'm gonna go down and save. Save and update settings. So now we have the global site tag installed. Okay. 
And then we want to have an event snippet, which goes on the thank you page. This is for the form submissions that submit their information on the landing page. So I just copied this, right? Upon page load is when this will trigger a conversion. So in this funnel sequence, this is why it's very important to have thank you pages to track your leads. So we have, this is our opt-in page, which looks like this. And then someone submits their information right here and they are sent to a thank you page, okay? So on that thank you page, which is right here on the back end of ClickFunnels, there's going to be an area where we can put the code, the conversion code, all right? And we're gonna put that in the tracking code section and let's see, where was that? That was here. I've already cut and pasted it. Just want to make absolutely sure that I have it properly cut and pasted. Beautiful. Now we're going to put it here. Boom. Okay. That is in the header code section of this specific page. Save. Beautiful. So we've set up uh, successfully our conversion tracking. We put the global site tag on the main header section of the entire website or, or funnel in this case. And then on the specific thank you page, anybody who visits this page upon page load is a conversion. It means they submitted their information on the landing page, a thank you page appeared, and now that is going to be uh, counted as a conversion in the Google Ads account. So let's press next upon page load very well. Okay, you've set up form submission conversion actions and auto tagging was enabled. Beautiful. For conversion tracking to work, you'll need to add a global site tag and event snippet to your website. To make sure your tag's working, check the tracking status on the conversion actions page. It may take a few hours to verify that the tag's on your website. You can also use Google Tag Assistant to see that the tag's working. Um, and you can edit the settings for this conversion anytime. Very good. So. We're going to press done, and we are done with our form submission conversion. Set up. Set up. All right, so what we're going through here is how to set up uh, both dynamic number insertion so that we can track phone calls from the landing page and then also how we set up call extensions as an ad extension within our Google Ads account. So uh, the first thing you need to do is create a company in CallRail. If you already have a, an agency account, this is easy to do. If not, just go to callrail.com and sign up. Um, so company name. Okay, and their time zone, what's Arizona's time right now? 8.27 a.m., is that true? All right, so let's see. That would put us in, well, So we're going to show you how to set up dynamic number insertion and call extensions using CallRail and Google Ads so that you can track both people who call in from your landing page and people who um, call directly from your Google Ads. So in CallRail, you first have to create a company. If you don't have a CallRail account, you just go to callrail.com, sign up for an account, then create a company for the company that's gonna have their calls tracked. And do this, put in the company name. Okay, time zones, mountains, mountain time in Arizona. Add users. 
Okay. Um, So this will just auto populate from the users that you already have in your account, um, which should just be internal employees of your company. All right. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create tracking numbers. Okay. So creating tracking numbers. Here's what you do. You go to create number. Okay. Now, this, the first one we're going to do is uh, how to set up the dynamic number insertion. So on my website, you're going to go calls, keywords, and web sessions. It's going to allow you to do um, dynamic number insertion tracking. So we're going to call this um, AZ. AZ bankruptcy landing page is the name of this pool. The minimum pool size you can do is four. You can't do three. Okay, so four, and then you're uh, and then you're going to forward calls to four eight zero four two two. Okay. Now we have our forward calls to. Now we're just going to track people who are visiting our specific landing page. Okay, so I'm going to put that URL right here. That is our exact landing page. Choose phone numbers. Okay, numbers local to 480. That's fine. Okay, uh, we're going to activate call recording. We always like to do one-way notification and then activate tracking number. Um, okay, so now we've, now, we're, now we've created the, the number pool. So the next step is we're going to set up dynamic number insertion, okay? So this code needs to be copied. And then we have to go to the landing page that we have. And we have to add this to our landing page, like so. This is our landing page. So then all we have to do is go into the, the page itself where we want the number to be swapped. Our swap target is this number. And then we're gonna to go to tracking code and we're going to paste the code right here. Okay, then we're gonna press save. So now we have successfully set up our dynamic tracking. Alrighty, now we're gonna test that JavaScript snippet by plugging our URL right here. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds and now it says your code snippet is properly installed. Okay, beautiful. So, we have now set up our JavaScript snippet. Now the next step is going to be to integrate with our Google Ads account so that we can track call extensions. So let me show you how this works. Um, so we've, we've successfully set up our, our number swapping. So if I now show you the landing page that we have, our number is going to swap as soon as I refresh it with one of the numbers that are in the pool. You see how that number is different? It's different than the other number that we had. So now we have dynamic number insertion set up properly. Um, we are going to integrate with our Google Ads account, but what I like to do before we do that 
is make sure that I have a call extension number set up. Okay, so here's how you set up a call extension number in CallRail to then bring over to your Google Ads account. So let's see, we're going to go to, uh, so where will you display this tracking number? Not on my website, it'll be somewhere else. Yes, in an ad extension, okay? Not only on mobile, it'll be on desktop and mobile. So we're gonna call this, we're gonna call this AZ bankruptcy call extension number. Okay, we will be forwarding calls to 480. Okay, create phone number. Yes, number's local to this. Um, try and find one that looks graphically appealing. I like 771. Um, number features, call recording um, for the client, and then uh, activate tracking number. Very good. Now we are done with that. So we have our tracking number here. Okay. And all righty. So now we have our call extension number. So now we're going to go back over to Google Ads. And we're going to create a call extension like this. We're going to go to our ads and extensions at the campaign level. We're going to go to extensions. I'm going to add a call extension. Okay, create new. Here's that phone number. Okay. Very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the conversion action uh, calls from ads, which will be added to your account when we get our first call. And I'm also going to integrate with um, our call rail account. Okay. I'll show you how that works. So now we have a call extension here. And then what we're going to do is back in here, now that we have our call extension uh, properly updated in Google ads, we're going to do this. We're going to go to settings, integrations. We're going to link with our Google Ads account. Okay, authorize. So next we're going to set up our call extension um, conversion action, which we just go to phone calls. Uh, calls from ads using call extensions. We'll call this call extension. Okay. Don't enter a dollar amount unless you're e-commerce. Okay. Uh, I like to do every one conversion for this. And then uh, call length. I'm going to reduce it to 20 seconds. Uh, maybe even, let's do 15. Conversion window, let's do 60 days for this. Including conversions, yes. And then for this one, let's also do time decay. Create and continue. Very well. We've set up our call extension conversion action right there. 